Hello. Good morning, Leah. Good morning, Allison. How are you? I'm great. I'm actually doing very well today. How are you? I'm I'm great. Good. Um, shall we introduce ourselves? Yeah, go for it. You go first this time. Okay. Um, hi, my name is Leah Kerrigan. I'm the coordinator of adult services at the Fairfield County District Library. Thanks for joining us this morning. I just finished the book, um, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue by V.E. Schwab, and I cannot recommend this book highly enough. If you like lyrical, like it's just, the story just sucks you in and um, it's, it's just these characters are, are fabulous and their story is incredible and you just, you fall in love with them mm -hmm. and it, it and oh, the ending. I've heard so much about the ending without hearing anything about the ending. That's what everyone always says. Yes, the ending. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, so it's, it's going to be, it's going to be fabulous. You're going to love it. Good. And I, 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 I cannot recommend it enough. Thank you for reading oh, it. Get a copy, read it. You're going to love it. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for reading it and recommending it to us. I'm Allison. I'm the technical services librarian here at Fairfield County District Library. This, I, Viewers, you will find me in the same situation as I was in two weeks ago. I have a different book club meeting on this Tuesday, and um, it is The Hate You Give. I have not begun it yet. It is also very long, but it's not as long as the one from two weeks ago, and it does have, it's what I was expecting before, where it does have way less text on the page, so um, I know <laughs> I'll make it through, so I'm reading The Hate You Give, and then I'm also reading the follow-up to that book, Strange the Dreamer, that I had to force myself through that one weekend and it's called the muse of nightmares i'm actually reading a, i'm reading a sequel to a fantasy novel which is insane but okay. whatever um leah's book recommendation was the one the invisible life of addie larue that i keep bugging her about reading <laughs> yes the invisible life of addie larue by b e schwab it's fabulous Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. And good morning, Andrea and Liz and Mary. Yes, I actually have something to say. I have something to say today. Um, We've missed Liz. I want to say Liz hasn't been here, hasn't been here in a few weeks, but she had a birthday this past Monday. She turned 30. So to turn 30 on a Monday, I think is kind of crummy. That feels like it's Monday and I've turned 30, but um, happy birthday to Liz. And it's just, uh, convenient. Andrea also had a birthday this week. She, I will not share her age because I feel like between 30 and 60, there's no need to tell some how old someone's is. <laughs> um, but she also had a birthday on Wednesday. So happy birthday to Andrea. I know these things because I know these ladies in person, but um, that also had me thinking when I saw them both on here and I remember they both had birthdays. Um, that is one of the things that more than anything makes me wonder about astrology because I have a handful of close like lifetime friends that I know I'm always going to be friends with, regardless of how often we talk, who were born in January. And I just wonder, like, is there something to it? Is there something to whatever sign is matching with me? It works with you. Yeah. No, I, I, think that, I think astrology is very interesting. Like I, I would never like make major life decisions based on astrology. <laughs> like that would be like my <laughs> only conversation. But I, I, I take it into account. Like, it's just, I, I've had, like, too many predictions, like, be, like, so spot on that it's, like, maybe there's something there. And, like, my personality is, like, when, when I do look at, like, my natal chart, it's very accurate. Yeah. And it's I've just, never gone that far into it before. Yeah. So, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Did you do your own natal chart or did you sign up for something where they did it for you? Um, I borrowed a book from the library, the only astrology book you'll ever need. That's the title of it. Um, I forget the author's name. I forget what her name is. Mm -hmm. The only astrology book you'll ever need. Maybe mm -hmm. uh, Mary could look that up for me and supply the author's name. Um, it, it's it got... <laughs> uh, a thing that comes with it that it will okay. do That's awesome. Well, happy birthday belatedly to Liz and Andrea. Thank you for both being on here. Um, oh, apparently they're Aquarius girls. So um, <laughs> thank you. For, thank you for clarifying that. Um, and now they've wished, wished one another happy birthday, which just feels so very wholesome and full circle on here. So I'm glad you guys have met in the comments. 
Um, <laughs> you guys did anything good on your birthdays? Because it is, you know, birthdays and COVID times are different than birthdays and regular times. So feel free to share in the comments if you did anything, anything different or fun to celebrate. Joanna Martin Wolfolk. That's that's her name. Okay. Joanna. Uh, Joanna Wolfolk. The only right. astrology book you'll ever need. Well, thank you, and that's good because I really don't want I, more than one. I I actually have an older version of that book, mm -hmm. and in the back of it, there are like all the charts where you you right. do it yourself. Mm -hmm. The newer version of the book does it for you. <laughs> so. I like the sound of that. That's cool. Yeah. Um, I was born on like the cusp of cancer and Leo. So mm -hmm. theoretically or whatever, that means you can kind of like go either way or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I definitely see both of those traits in me. Or is it that I have a bunch of traits in me as a person in between cancer and Leo, it just covers most common traits. And I have just most common traits. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I should do my natal chart and find out. Yes, because the natal chart not only looks at like your sun sign, but it looks like your moon sign and like where all the planets are at the time mm -hmm. of your birth. So it, it, it does a lot yes. more than just the sun sign. All righty. Well, maybe maybe that can be an assignment for me and I'll report back on here at some point. Um, I also wanted to share that I got a new mug from a friend in a belated Christmas exchange. <laughs> it's recording of its books, it says. Um, that is very true. She has never helped me carry boxes of books out of a used book sale before. So she may feel differently about this if she had ever done that. If she'd ever seen me as a kid throwing like my coat over a box of books in the car. So my dad didn't see how many I bought. Um, cause not cause he was anti books, but because where are you going to put those? Like really where are you going to put them? Um, but anyway, so I have this mug. Uh, there's not coffee in it though, because this morning I was up pretty early and I went to Starbucks and got a cold brew. So I can't have any more caffeine. <laughs> cold brew hits you differently. <laughs> so, yeah. So I think that's all my updates. Okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, um, it's not really a me update, but I thought I would share. Uh, you can now get the Harry Potter books on Hoopla. All so, of them? All of them. So, yeah. No waiting on Hoopla. So No waiting on Hoopla. And we all know the Harry Potter. On, well, I say this. I've actually never listened to Harry Potter on audio. I know I've confessed that before. But I know. I'm aware of how good it is on audio. I, I just, listened to them. Um, was it last year? Or the year before? I don't know. I, I, I don't remember. It was, like, very recently. Yeah. I read them, like two times, at least two times, depending on which book it was. Mm -hmm. um, but I finally listened to them and which, if you know me and how much I love audiobooks, um, it's crazy that I finally got around to it. Um, but yeah, in 2019, I remember it was 2019, it wasn't 2020 when everything was crazy. Um, it was 2019, I finally listened to them. And it just, they're magical to listen to. So yes, yeah, um, they're, they are available. So Hi, Marilyn. Marilyn says, yes, they're the best on audio, audio and Jim Dale is a fabulous narrator. He is. I've got to do it. But it's such a sensory experience to sit down with those books for, for me, having read them as a kid. It's just it's hard to not hold my, my, my copy, but I really want to have listened to them. Um, and yeah. Andrea pointed out that it's not just the Harry Potter books, it's it's more books in the whole Wizarding World situation. So Quidditch Through the Ages and uh, yeah. Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, I'm guessing. I believe the email from Hoopla said there were over 200, which I know there aren't, I know there aren't over 200 of just those. So I'm not sure what else they're including, but. They're probably including like the, the print version, the audio version, um, and uh, they, it's probably available in a couple couple of different languages on Hoopla, I would okay. bet. So. Yeah. That, yeah. that makes sense. Also, I just, I just like realized one thing we don't have, we have several illustrated versions, but we have no comic Harry Potter. There's Ooh. been no graphic novelization of the Harry Potter books, which I mean, how it's immense. It's immense and yeah. breaking all that up. Um, but I bet we will one day. Um, Andrea's listened to the Jim Dale, but not the Steve Fry, and she'd love mm -hmm. to compare me too. I would love to listen to the Stephen Fry um, audiobooks. And Marilyn has great memories of the midnight releases at the library. 
Um, I, I didn't um, make it to any of those, but I think I'm trying to think if all the books were out by the time I started at the library. When did the last book come out? 2007. Okay, I was there at the, at the library then. I don't know why yeah. I didn't really get to that. Uh, um, Andrea, the illustrated versions. Um, there's one, Jim McKay, is that who it is? Big, these, I get one, when they come out, I, they, I get it for Christmas that year because they're not, you know, yeah. super cheap. Um, but they're lovely. They're so pretty and so cool. They're these big glossy pages and there's illustrations all over. Not every page has illustrations, but there's lots of them. And um, so he's working on Goblet of Fire now, which is taking longer because it's, I think it was like every year and now it's gonna be more time in between, but um, they're really, really, really cool. I would offer you that you could borrow mine, but you can't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sharing. <laughs> well, Goblet of Fire is when the book started getting really big. So it makes sense that that's the point where it's like every other year. I remember I was living in Japan um, and I was reading Goblet of Fire and the students were so jealous because it wasn't available in the Japanese translation yet. So they were like, Ooh, what happens? I'm like, I'm not telling you. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, that's rough. That I'm yeah. like getting weird inside feeling like, what would it be like? Cause I mean, when Goblet of Fire came out, I remember that. I remember going to purchase it. The midnight releases you guys had at the library. I was at the midnight releases at the bookstores at that time. And like, I can't imagine if someone in my life were reading that and I couldn't, that is just. Cool. Yeah. They were really jealous when they saw that I had it. Um, and Marilyn said that they, uh, they did a midnight release for the illustrator version a few years ago. Yeah. And G um, Angie says she's been buying the illustrated versions for her daughters for Christmas. I think that's a wonderful gift. And, and Andrea says, for your adult children as well, which is what my mom does for me. A few of her friends had them, so she's held them in her hands <laughs> and that they are gorgeous. So, um, and no. no worry, she wouldn't do that to you. She wouldn't steal yours. <laughs> you could hold them in your hands. I wouldn't do that. I just... <laughs> And I'm not very like, particular. I'm not particular about books, really. Given given many many people work, many book lovers are, but I'm just not. I I can't I can't I can't worry about that kind of thing. But these illustrated ones are just so nice. <laughs> I, I do want the illustrated ones. I'll confess. Um, well, and Audrey's been getting, getting them, them for Christmas. Yeah, Audrey's been getting them for Christmas too. That's very exciting. <laughs> um. Oh, good. Angie's daughter's 28. Wonderful. Excellent. Well, it's one of those things when you grow up with it, you just forever love it. It's it's one yeah. of those things that it's for especially for people your age, Allison, you know, it was yeah. right. You were reading those books right at the pit of a little time yeah. where, like, you know, you're coming into your own and it, it just so shapes. So yeah. it just has an effect on on you. Yeah. So and the books you read at that time. Yes, the, any book or anything you're into at that time, just you're like you said, it really shapes you regardless of what it is. And then when you're the same age as the character for, you know, the roughly uh, throughout, that makes a difference. And then also, I was actually thinking about this this morning. Um, if I don't know what the effect would have been like if I could just start and finish them in like one binge or whatever now, like if I were a kid now and they already existed because so much of that experience was the waiting, the like yeah. the anticipation and the waiting between books, the whole reading experience lasted almost 10 years. And I'm, I, I will go ahead and say it. I never stopped thinking about those books over the course of those 10 years. Those yeah. books occupied so much of my brain space. And as the releases would get closer, I mean, like I would like lose sleep over it, you know, just yeah. wondering what was going to happen. I was so excited and I don't know. I think that that waiting period in there was really significant as far as people getting, becoming so wrapped up in the universe. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember the waiting and the anticipation, but I think, you know, it was you different. Were. I, I was in grad school when book yeah. five came out and like, I bought it that first week, but I wasn't, you know, it took me a while to get through it because right. I was in grad school, you know. You were in grad school. I yeah. was 14. I was home for the summer. And that whole summer had built up to that moment. 
we all went to the midnight release. My whole, like the last like three years of my life had led up to that moment. So, I mean, I know it, maybe it's embarrassing for me to be going on about this, but it just, it really, it really was my, I mean, I think, you know, like you said, kids in that age and teenagers at those formative times, you all, everyone's into something different, but what you're into really does kind of yeah. take on its own life. And that certainly did. And I think just the unique thing was, is that that did for a lot of kids at the same time who were all waiting for the same thing. <laughs> yeah. It just, it was, it, or maybe it was book six when I was in grad school. I don't know. One of them, I was like, and I remember my sister kept calling me. She's like, have you finished it yet? I want to talk to you about it. I'm like, yeah. no, I've got this project I've got to do. <laughs> so I know. I can't imagine having all that free time as being, being a kid, it gives you so much more to invest in other things. But yeah, if I were in grad school, my goodness, I, I don't, when I look back at the time being in grad school, I'm not sure how much I read that wasn't for school. Right, yeah. And Marilyn says, instant gratification isn't nearly as impactful as having to wait for something you really want. Mm -hmm. um, and Andrea remembers going to a midnight release of the movie and the film burned up in the middle of you. Yes. We and were at the same midnight release, Andrea and I, we go way back. And um, it was oh my god, that would be so disappointing. I believe it was Prisoner of Azkaban, and you're thinking that like is the atmosphere just getting smoky or something? And there was this weirdness, and then like it started. She can if she has more to add, if she remembers better. But I think it started like getting like black around the bottom, and then the image just like disappeared, and we're all like, <laughs> "What's happening?" And thankfully they were able to replace it, but it was definitely. Um, that was unique. That has never happened to me in another movie before. Either. Wow, that is that is amazing. I yeah, yeah. that that's crazy. And for it to be that movie, I know. I, I know. I, uh, yeah, that was, my, was. Yeah, my little sister, who's just a couple years younger than you, she went to um, several of the midnight releases at the movie theater. Mm -hmm. um, my mom would take her and like sometimes she'd get to like skip school the next day because like it would open on a Friday, but like Thursday night at midnight. Yeah. And <laughs> so, oh, man. yeah, she, that was always very exciting. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah. And then will we have midnight releases of anything again? I did midnight releases of um what are those movies called? Twilight Saga? Yes. <laughs> I went to some of those. Oh, I know. I'm sorry um, I made that face. <laughs> I remember where it was like, I don't, I, I think it was like the second movie and they played the first one first and then they go oh. into the second one. Um, so there was like an intermission and uh, it's, it's the point like he doesn't have a shirt and Edward says something about, doesn't he have a shirt? And I'm like, I hope not out loud in the middle of the movie theater and like everyone around's laughing. It was, it was great fun. My sister and I had so much fun with uh, oh, Twilight yeah. Saga. I've always so, wanted to do one of those ones where they show other movies before and then the new one at midnight, but I never yeah. got a chance. Um, we have quite a few comments. Marilyn says that when she went and saw Titanic, the heat went out. So it was like you were actually in the Prozac Atlantic by the end of the movie. <laughs> that very, it's, you know, it sets the scene. It puts it you does. in the I agree with Mary. It sounds like a very immersive experience. Like when yes. you're at Disney World and they have like those movie theaters that do stuff, they like shake you around or like spritz a smell or whatever. <laughs> I'm glad you didn't get doused with water though. And Andrea said, even before I said it, she knew it would be Twilight <laughs> because that's who I am. Yes. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. That's story. <laughs> that's fine. That's fine. And I, I'm so sorry I made that face when I said it because I don't judge anyone for what they read. And we all, I mean, I just went on about Harry Potter for 15 minutes, but for some reason it's hard for me to say Twilight and not make that face. It just is. I know. I know. I, 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 uh, I just, I really enjoyed the, the Twilight saga and my sister and I, we had a party and she made like decorations like the broken bed and, uh, <laughs> and it, it was just, it was, it was a lot of fun. She, she's very good at the creative aspect of that kind of I'm stuff. very glad I didn't spit my water out all over the computer <laughs> while live on this. Yeah. So, <laughs> and she came up with, uh, we, we made like, um, you know, 
for one of the foods. We had pigs in a blanket, but we put two little sausages in. So it was uh, Bella and <laughs> and Jacob in the, in, the, in the sleeping bag. It was just like, oh my know. gosh. So and I will clarify. I have seen every Twilight movie. I, I'm over here doing this, but I have seen them all. It kind of started as a joke. And then it was like, well, I just need to I'm just going to keep going. It's only two hours of my life. I'll see what happens next. But and, I tried uh, reading the book and I couldn't. I could Liz, not. Liz says Allison is a judgy judger. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. I don't care. She can judge me all she wants. My I'm judging. Really love. Yeah, I. I a librarianship. Every book, their reader. Every reader, yeah. their book. Right. I know. I know. So. <laughs> I know. And like I said, seen all the movies, but I could not make it through the book. It was just a little too, a little too rough for me book wise. But I do remember, I remember um, the summer. I don't know how they all came out. I don't know what order, what, I don't know like what the timeline when, was between yeah. books. But I remember one time I was, it was summertime and I was shopping with my mom, my grandma, my aunt. We were at this teacher store and uh, the girl behind the counter there was only one person in there and that working and then us and the girl behind the counter just had one of the twilight books open and it was whatever had just had just come out and it was a harry potter type of situation she was just like bent over in her book behind the counter um totally ignoring everything else that was going on in any situation where i see someone buried in a book like that is wonderful so yeah, yeah. um Becky had recommended the series to me a few times and I was just like, I'll get to it. I'll get to it. And she had recommended it again. And she's like, Leah, you would really love this series. So I started it. And like the next week I was like, Oh, Becky, I'm reading breaking dawn. And she's like, you can't start with breaking dawn. You got to I'm like, Oh, I've already gotten the first. Because like, uh -uh. <laughs> I'd waited till the whole series was out before yeah. I started it. And she thought I started with the last book. I'm like, no, no, no. I've already read all of those. <laughs> like I've been reading one a night. It's only taken me yeah. four days. I'm already through. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't really, I, I don't really read series of much of anything. And so I don't really have a comparable experience to like, I mean, I watch TV shows, which this day and age is, you know, bingeable and, you know, so I have that experience, but when it comes to books, I'm just trying to think, I don't really, I don't really have those. And and I know that you often will wait till things are completely out so that you don't. And I know someone else like that too, another friend of mine in a book club who, who would just rather wait till they're all out so she can pace herself appropriately. And she doesn't, she doesn't usually read them all in one sitting, but she can't, she doesn't want to cope with the idea that she'd have to wait. Yeah. Out of her control. Sometimes I will like binge the first couple so that I kind of get like the character in my mind. And like once mm -hmm. I've got the character and I feel like I know them, I can then take a break and read some other stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but I really like to feel like this character is cemented in my mind and I, I, I know how they're going to react. And I just, yeah. I don't know why, but I feel like once I know the character, it's okay to move on to a different series. Yeah. And then and then I can slowly work yeah. my way through the rest. You sort of jump in to get acclimated and then mm -hmm. you can return to it more easily because everyone's established sort yes. of. Yeah. yeah. There's like, if I read one and then I wait a year, I've forgotten so much about who they are and yeah. what their story is that I, it feels like I don't know them. And I, I don't know. It's the first weird. one again and mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I've had to do a lot of rereading of the first first book in a series because I've forgotten it. Well, I mean, that's fair. That makes sense, especially like you said, if you're trying to keep up with something that's still being published. Um, so that book that I read a couple weeks ago, Strange the Dreamer, and now I'm reading Music Nightmares, it's only a duology. So I felt like that was do doable. <laughs> yeah. um, and so I, that's why I'm reading the second one in that. And and that, like I said, that's a little unusual for me. And it's a fantasy thing, which is unusual, but it's just so different than anything else that I've really read. And I'm, I'm really enjoying it. And and I think that there may even in the second one be something that's more of like a, more traditionally, almost like a sci-fi aspect to it, which I just, I'm really enjoying it. So maybe, who knows, maybe like a year from now, I'll be just this series reader, this fantasy <laughs> series reader. You never know what will happen. Yeah. Possibly. Well, I don't know. I, I think you're always going to be more of a. Yeah. 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 You I know. think I will. I think I will too. Um, speaking of 
the types of things I read. Um, okay. I was going to ask if I've mentioned this several times, but I was going to ask if I could finally do that thing where I'm like, this is what I'm returning to the library this week. I'm sure it's really good. <laughs> That's why I checked it out, but I don't have time to read it. Sure. <laughs> Okay, I gotta get this stuff out of my house. I'm not. I I know it's been here too long, and I know I know it's just so not gonna be waiting. <laughs> yeah, so I need to give it to someone else. Give someone else a chance to re to read it. Um, so this one, I'll start with this one. But they're all theoretic. I think they all should be good. Some of them are, are like on best of lists and stuff. It just this one is a memoir. It's called Your Blue Is Not My Blue. And it drew me in because the subtitle is A Missing Person Memoir. And it's about, it's written by um, a woman who met a man on the Pacific Crest Trail. They were both hiking it. And by the end of hiking it, they were basically in love. And a year later, um, they married where they met on the Pacific Crest Trail. And then um, I think a few years into their marriage, he left to go to, I think, a funeral or a wedding and never returned and so this book is about her coming to terms with him disappearing and um the grief and the shock associated with that um and then also it says that there's a revelation um and nothing prepared her for the disarming truth so that pulled me in too because what is the disarming truth so somebody right. i'm going to return this somebody check this out read it and then feel free to contact me and tell me you know what the let me know what the disarming truth is because I want to know but I don't have time to read it. I I find books about missing people fascinating or like people who what, walk away from their life. Mm -hmm. One year, the very first three books I read that year were about people who walked away from their life and just kind of I'm like, Leah, are you, are you thinking <laughs> about walking away? Right. What does this mean? Right. Like yeah. you need to maybe find a different genre. But I also am very intrigued by the idea of doing one of those trails, like Pacific Crest Trail. That's 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 too much for me. But like <laughs> right. shorter, right. A shorter pilgrimage. I would I would very interested in doing one of those. So. That is cool. And actually, I'll have to think. I can add this to the list that we post if I can remember the title of it. We just got a book about a. A woman who went missing and they thought that maybe she just was walking away from her life and i'll let you know what the title is in case you want because it's new so you won't have read it yet but um if that's still your genre it, it, it intrigues me i don't know why right all right let me pull another one real quick this is a romance this time next year by sophie cousins and uh it's about their they're 30 now, but it's about the two babies who were first born on New Year's Eve in 1990. Liz, it's your age group here, your cohort. Um, and they were the two babies who were born on New Year's Eve. But the boy, he was the one who was deemed like the first one born. So his mom got the cash prize. And they've run into each other like on New Year's Eve on their joint 30th birthdays, the guy and the girl. And... Um, I don't know. They're from different worlds. Why do they keep bumping into each other, et cetera, et cetera. His life has turned out dramatically different than hers. Does it have to do with, cause he was the lucky one who got the prize money, who was the first baby born, but it's a romance. So, I mean, you know, ultimately how it's going to turn out probably the cover says how many chances to meet your perfect match. Nice. <laughs> um, do you want me to do have anything? Do you want me to keep, keep going? Um, I'll, I'll do one. Do one. Um, didn't see that coming by Rachel Hollis. She wrote, "Girl, wash your face. Girl, stop apologizing." This is um, <laughs> her marriage fell apart. Like mm -hmm. she was stunned and like was not expecting that. And um, it's about like dealing with you know things that you're not prepared for. So mm -hmm. I, it, it looked good. Her books are popular. I thought I'll give this a try. I'm not going to read it. Um, so it's on my take back list, but it yeah. was really good and she's really popular. So someone else will read it. Someone else will read it. <laughs> Anyone who reads any of these that we talk about, feel free to comment or get back with us at some, in some way about it because we're releasing yeah. them into the world. Um, this one is called Hex and it is by Rebecca Knight. Um, and it is about 
um, an expelled PhD candidate in biological science who is exploring the fine line between poison and antidote, working alone to set a speed record for the detoxification of poisonous plants. But what ends up happening, I believe, is there's like six people involved, and I think it's just about a tangled web of relationships and interpersonal drama, um, <laughs> probably sped along by the fact that they all have access to poison. Um, so it's not very long. It's not alive. <laughs> yeah. So not very long, but it just seemed like an interesting concept. I liked the cover. It's like a skull made of flowers. Um, read it and let me know how it is. <laughs> I'll do one. Um, actually, I might not return this one. I, I might keep it a little bit longer. Um, Joint Custody by... Oh, I know that one. <laughs> Lauren Barrett's Logstead and Jackie Logstead. Um, it's a romance but it looks like it's written from the dog's point of view. Like based on the description on the back, I haven't started the book yet, but he's like the man and the woman, it's just like, they need to stay together because they got the good treats. I don't know. Um, but, <laughs> but it looks it totally right. looks like a love story written from the dog's point of view. And look at that puppy. I think it is because I remember when that one came in and I remember we get like a notification about about what books have holds before they even show up. So we know to pull them out. We know to do them first. And so I was writing that down. I was like, OK, joint custody has holds. And in my mind, I had a different image of what joint custody, what the cover of that book was going to look like. I thought it was going to be at, at most one of those like romantic suspense. And there's like a man on the cover. Or there's like handcuffs involved. I don't know. But then I saw this dog and I was like, what the, what the heck is this? And yeah, I, I think the dog actually, even at one point, um, like tries to pull them back together by eating chocolate and getting sick. Yes, yes. Drastic times call for drastic doggy measures. <laughs> Indeed. So he eats a whole two pounds of chocolate, even though he knows it's uh, uh, bad for him, but he's willing to whisk, risk it to get them back together, so. I think you should keep that not one. Not a dog who's willing to sacrifice for his own nah. happiness. <laughs> I think you should hold on to that one for a little bit longer because yeah, you know, I'll find time for that one. <laughs> um, I'll do one more. I know we're getting we're already over on time, but um, this one is actually pretty new. It's called "Sometimes You Have to Lie," and it is the life and times of Louise Fitzhugh, renegade author of *Harriet the Spy* okay. by Leslie Brody. So that's the author of *Harriet the Spy*. Um, and so it's it's a biography of her um, and about what her her life was like. Her novels, written in an era of political defiance, are full of resistance to liars, to authority, to conformity, and even radically for a children's author to make believe. Uh, she lived her life as a dissenter. She was a friend to underdogs, outsiders, and artists. Um, she was also a lesbian, so she was pressured to disguise her true nature. I just I was I loved Harry the Spy. I read it many times growing up. I wanted to read this too, but I just know that in the next three weeks I won't, so. Yeah, looks kind of thick. Yeah, this one, you can tell there was a theme with some of these. I was like, oh, it's a short book. I'll, I'll check that out and read it, but this one's this one's bigger and. Yeah, <laughs> this is one that I was like, oh, that's super short, I can read that. Um, Ghosting the News, mm -hmm. Local Journalism and the Crisis of American Democracy by Margaret Sullivan. It's about like, you know, the disappearance of local newspapers and yeah. how, local news is becoming a thing of the past and um and how important it is especially to have that local perspective yeah. but they're just newspapers are dying across the country mm -hmm. and I thought, that, that's really interesting especially given the fights i have with our local newspaper every year when they try to increase my prices way too much but um <laughs> but uh but yeah, I just I'm not gonna read it, but yeah. I think it's good because it's important. So it's an important topic for sure. And I know one, yeah, I know that that's something that people are trying to come up with, like news collectives, and you know, or you know, trying publicly funded news sources are struggling. And yeah, so I know that's a very important topic. But and I, I thought you know for not committing to reading it in the next three weeks. Yeah, I uh, and I thought. I would mention it to you because I know your brother's a reporter. So. Yes, my brother does work in print news. So. <laughs> he is a print news journalist. Um, so I do think about those things a lot. He and I both ended up in different wings of like the information professions. Yes. He creates <laughs> I know we're kind of past time, but I have one thing that might be good to end on. This book, okay. you, know, you may remember ordering it um, because it is so unique but it is called The Call Me Ishmael Phone Book. 
<laughs> and um, they have a YouTube channel, which I will link to when we post some information on here. I'll link to it. But it is set up like a phone book. It's got ads in it. And um, it's in different. That's not a great. Uh, there's a page that looks more like a phone book page. Um, essentially, you can call this phone number and put in the extension located next to every entry. And you can hear a story or someone's memory or experience with that particular book. And the way that the book is set up, it goes by subject. So under fathers, um, you can dial the extension to hear someone's reflection on fathers in the context of the alchemist, the book thief, the hobbit, the invention of solitude, the merger of Rod Roger Ackroyd, the world according to Garp, down, 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 down. Um, you can also, that yeah, is, yeah. Then they also go by location. So Nebraska, for example, here. And then there's other little things in here too. Some are written out reflections. Um, this is an ad for interviews with Nebraska bookstores. So you can call this extension and listen to stories from some of our favorite bookshops in Nebraska. Um, there's a list of those bookshops. Um, and then they also go by, um, I don't know what this one is. Um, so they have, but they have three ways of organizing and I haven't figured out the third one yet. Um, oh, yeah, by book but title. On hold for that one. It looks just really good. Straight by book title in the back. So you have subject, location, and then just a straight go by book title. And the other cool thing is, is that you can call the number yourself and record your own thing. And then it could end up on their thing. So if you just, they have a YouTube channel, call me Ishmael phone book, I think, or maybe it's just call me Ishmael, but the authors are Stephanie Kent and Logan Smalley, the call me Ishmael no, Mary, not with me. Yeah. <laughs> the Call Me Ishmael Project is what is what it is. But the phone, I just love the idea of this phone book. I'm definitely going to ask for it for a present sometime. I love those like books where like it's like community coming together and creating mm -hmm. like like the people of New York books where it's like mm -hmm. individual stories or yes. um, post secret where people are sharing mm -hmm. their secrets. I love that kind of Mm -hmm. collaborative creation yeah. so that is just fascinating it's and really 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 just put it on hold so when you return it it will go right out I'm gonna have to add myself to the holds list I better, return it. Then, right? I better do what I said um and they describe it as quirky nostalgic and full of heart um and Mary wanted to know if it was from McSweeney's and it is not but I do understand that McSweeney's is a publisher of quirky quirky things and it is not, but it does have, and there, there are things often have a design component um, that's impressive like this one. But yeah, please, please put a hold on it. Anyone who's interested. And like I said, I think I'm actually just gonna have to ask for it for a gift sometime because there's also just something so cool about being able to call a phone number. <laughs> it's like, I want a story, but I don't want to read a book. Let's just call a phone number and hear have someone. someone. Yeah, have someone tell me about the book that I don't feel like reading right now. <laughs> but, or how they how how it left them feeling or whatever. Exactly. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So anywho, we'll leave we'll leave on that note, but I'll return it today. It'll probably go to Maryland and then go <laughs> along from there. <laughs> that sounds great. That's a good one to end on. Yeah. Well, thanks for thanks, thanks for joining us. us. <laughs> yeah, it was great talking with you. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Well, see we'll see you next time. Yep. Bye, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>